by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Water paralyzes part of North Carolina. I'm Courtney Zabowski in Wilmington, where the city has become an island. And Montana lends a helping hand after Hurricane Florence strikes the southeast. Coming up, learn which Montana National Guard soldiers are heading to flood-ravaged states and what they'll be doing. Good morning to you. I'm Missy O'Malley. Chet Lehman is off this week, and Matt Elwell will have our forecast in just a moment. Since making landfall on Friday, Florence has drenched the Carolinas with record-setting rainfall. The storm's death toll has climbed to at least 18 after an infant was killed by a falling tree. CBS's Courtney Zabowski has more from Wilmington, North Carolina. Three days after Florence made landfall, the storm is still battering the Carolinas. Flood waters are still raging across parts of our state, and the risk to life is rising with the angry waters. The National Weather Service says some rivers in North Carolina won't crest until tomorrow. It came fast and I just had to jump in the car and run. Shane Carson evacuated New Bern along the coast ahead of Florence. Now 300 miles inland in Black Mountain, floodwaters forced him to leave again. No, sure, if we're going back home, I mean, I don't have a home now. It's gone. Back in New Bern, where the water has receded, residents are facing new problems. That's the top half of our one and a half story garage. I don't know where the rest of it is. Lee Bell also has to figure out what to do with a boat that's ended up in her driveway. Don't know where the Miss Scarlet came from. It must have been anchored somewhere and just washed in during the storm. Farther south here in Wilmington, you can see the damage Florence left behind. Floodwaters are blocking every road in and out of the city. Officials plan to airlift in essentials for people until the floodwaters recede. As soon as I hit the water, I knew. Doug Nickerson needed help after his car failed to make it through a flooded street. I feel kind of uh, stupid for just, you know, not blatantly seeing it, but it really is dark. More than 900 people have been rescued by trucks, boats, and helicopters in the past few days. Courtney Zabowski, CBS News, Wilmington, North Carolina. President Trump is expected to visit that area this week. The storm now, a tropical depression, is still in North Carolina, but it's also started to spread to north, spread north into Virginia, West Virginia, and Kentucky as well. And the Montana Army National Guard troops are on their way to the East Coast to help with the hurricane response. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian was there on Sunday as they prepared to take off. On Sunday morning, Army National Guard soldiers were hard at work at the Army Aviation Support Facility in Helena, getting ready for a trip across the country. We've got a lot of logistics that have to be done to get going, people get orders. It's a big process that goes into it. The Montana Guard sent 19 soldiers in two Black Hawk helicopters and one Chinook helicopter to assist with the emergency response to Florence. Some additional mechanics will join them later on. The Montana troops will provide much needed additional air support as the relief efforts move forward. The crews will make a two day trip from Montana to Maryland. From there, they'll be staged and available to help the hurricane response in any way necessary. We're expecting to do anything from search and rescue missions to resupply or just stand by as needed and help out as we can. The Montana Guard responded to a call for assistance through EMAC, a nationwide system that lets states request and share resources in times of need. EMAC has previously been used to bring other states' National Guard troops to assist with Montana wildfires. Other states come here to help us out and we go there. It's really a, just a big family uh, with the Guard. Guard leaders say for now, the Montana soldiers will remain on the East Coast for as long as they're needed. That's what we raised our right hand to do, is to go help the citizens and help where, where needed, and our brethren in the Guard especially. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Now the Montana National Guard has previously sent air support for disasters like the earthquake in Haiti and severe wildfires in Washington State. Matt joins me now. Matt, we've been talking so much about weather, so much about the aftermath and the right. surge as well. Uh, it's going to be pretty impressive to see these numbers continue to rise as far as the flooding is concerned. For us, we kind of have to look a few days down the road before we start seeing rain. But cool temperatures, hey, they're here this morning uh, for at least part of the area. 23 this morning in West Yellowstone, Belgrade sitting at 41. Uh, mainly clear skies, a couple of clouds out there, but really for the most part, we should see mainly sunny conditions for the day today. We'll top out into the upper 60s to low 70s.
We do have a big cool down on the way. We'll tell you about the timing on that and a look at our rain chances this week. That's all coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. It's now 633. A new zoning proposal has made Bozeman residents concerned. MTN's Madaris Babb gives us a preview of tonight's City Commission meeting. City staff are recommending that commissioners approve the rezoning of these two lots behind me from residential to residential office. Community development manager Chris Saunders says that the applicant has not disclosed what they plan to build here. There, because the property is largely planned for residential purposes, it would restrict the amount of non-residential space that they could put there. And so they could do a mixed-use building or separated buildings. Uh, or they could do all residential. Neighbors surrounding this property are asking commissioners not to move forward with this amendment. Their main concerns are the increase in traffic and future problems with drainage into the sewer system and parking. Saunders said this amendment has had more public concern than usual. Anytime we look at a zone change within a area that's already been developed, it generally garners a fair amount of attention and, and people are looking carefully at it. Uh, we see fewer comments when it's um, coming in on the edge of the city as part of an annexation or something just because there are fewer people. More than 25 percent of the adjacent property owners have put in a protest. Therefore, commissioners will have to approve it by a super majority in order for the rezoning to take place. In Bozeman, Madera's Bab, MTN News. The city staff says even though there has been a significant number of public comments, the amendments meets both the city and the state's criteria. And because of this, the staff is recommending the commission to approve that change. And La Chatelaine Chocolate Company was named one of the best chocolatiers in America in 2013. The husband and wife owners create unique confections in their small shop in downtown Bozeman. La Chatelaine Chocolates are featured in our new episode of Under the Big Sky next weekend. Here's a preview. Under the Big Sky is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Vein Clinic and Markovich Real Estate. I've always loved chocolate. In Paris, I would go to school, I would walk by La Maison Chocolat that was very near where I lived and where my school was. So every day I would buy one piece of chocolate. That was my treat. No, I didn't have much budget, but that was, that was important to me and that was where I spent my money. I grew up on the Gulf Coast near New Orleans in Mississippi. I knew as a very young person, even before I could articulate it, that there was just something magical, very special about chocolate. My grandfather was a Frenchman, and growing up near New Orleans, I definitely grew up with that culture, the French culture. I moved to the U.S. in 93. My first wife is from Montana, so that's how I got here. I decided to go to Montana State University. I just chose to stay afterwards. Immediately, I felt at home here with the people. We met through our kids, our two youngest kids, when they were in elementary school. We are a blended family. We have five children together. We both just had a mutual love of the culinary arts, mainly chocolate. He was working for an engineering firm. I was working as a writer for an investment relations company. I just I felt restless and I knew I needed to be in the kitchen. Shannon had the idea of the chocolate shop. There was a chocolate shop in Bozeman that just closed, so we thought there's no opportunity there. We thought, oh, why not try something like this? And so we opened our first shop. Now you can catch that full story in the upcoming episode of Under the Big Sky. It airs September 22nd at 6 p.m. and at 10.35 right here on Montana News Network. And if you ever want to know a special gift to bring the morning crew we love chocolate. It is time for a quick break. When we come back, we head to the playground. It's time for another monthly award for our community first, where we highlight a nonprofit doing outstanding work. And in a moment, we tell you all about the Greater Gallatin United Way After School Kids Link program. But first, we check in with John Dickerson. To see your headlines coming up at 7 right here on CBS. I head on CBS this morning. We're in one North Carolina city entirely cut off by floodwaters. 
as Tropical Depression Florence is called more dangerous than ever. We'll ride along with the Coast Guard. And 23-time Olympic gold medalist Michael Phelps is in Studio 57. He'll discuss fatherhood and how he fights depression and anxiety as he adjusts to life after swimming. We'll see you at 7.